Oh, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. At least that's what I hear. I honestly don't get out much. Surprise! <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Hump Day. It is Wednesday, the 15th of November, which means tomorrow I've got my live streaming event. I do these every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my co-host, we go on for about an hour talking to other investors about stocks they're interested in. Now, we may stretch the show a little longer than an hour. We just stop at an hour. We can go as long as we want, and you can leave any time you want. But we're only covering about six to seven stocks in an hour. Well, if you think about it, that's about five minutes worth of information and five minutes of charting. I give you any less than that. It's really not even worth stopping in, and I'm trying to give you value here. So if you've got a ticker that you want looked at, and I know some of you have got tickers I haven't looked at, I've seen the requests. I think you want me to look at them in my on top and hot videos. But if your company has a hot catalyst, but its chart doesn't look too good, <laughs> that's probably why I haven't looked at it. And I haven't made a comment back to you because I don't want to tell you that your chart doesn't look good. I don't want to hurt your feelings. But I'll look at it on the live stream. So get your ticker in the comments. I'll go over the information. My co-host will go over the charts and we'll give you our opinion. But as I said, I can only look at six to seven in an hour. So if you really want your ticker looked at, get it in the queue early. The show may start at four, but I put up a placeholder around noon. So you can drop your ticker in the comment box there. You don't even have to be here for the show. I'll see the ticker and I will cover it. And that gives me a head start on the information as well. That's four o'clock Eastern Standard Time every Thursday, except Thanksgiving coming up. But you knew that, right? So what we do on this show is we look at hot OTC and penny stocks. I trade penny stocks all through the day. Those are stocks that are under five bucks and they're on every market. And as I'm trading, I'm keeping my eyes peeled for stocks that have potential to make us money. Now, to be completely honest, most of the stocks I discover, I find that potential looking at the charts. I could go looking at the news, but I can go through a lot of charts faster. And instantly, I can tell if a chart has heat. I can see if there's volume coming in or if it looks like she's ready to break out over a strong SMA. Raging technicals, I can see that very quickly. If I see a chart that has heat, then I'll take the time to go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for a catalyst. I find a catalyst, boom, we've got ourselves a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I share with you on a regular basis. And I've got a few to share with you right now. Now, most of the information we're going to get for these stocks is going to come from the otcmarkets.com website. This is my home for due diligence and research. And this is a company on the OTC markets. Their ticker is OTCM. And their business is what you see right here, housing and taking care of all of this information. Now, the first stock we're going to take a look at, we've got to take a look at because everybody's watching it and its shareholder value is building up on this company very quickly. This is Song, ticker S-O-N-G, Music Licensing Incorporation, also known as Pro Music Rights. The company came onto the market November of last year and their business is pretty simple. They license music for artists. Now, here recently, the CEO started hacking away at the share structure, giving us shareholder value. And you can see how the investors like that. Look at the charts. They are hot, folks. It's an atypical breakout chart with more volume than I've seen in a long time. It looks like a blue background. He started this about a month ago. Well, you can see, looking at the charts, there was no volume. It wasn't building up. It was no volume and then boom, this huge wall of volume and that's what we've had. Wall after wall of volume for about a month and she is set up to break out right now. Now he's been doing a lot of work hacking at these shares and he's made some extra promises and he's proving it. He's not just talking, he's doing it, which is a big deal folks. We're talking about a stock on the pink. CEOs are always talking up big storms, trying to get us excited. This guy is actually doing it, so he's earning my respect, and he's giving us shareholder value. Bottom line is, before we go through all the information, which is over at the news, when we get to it, you'll see, if you owned a share about a month ago, it is worth 75% more right now, regardless of the price, because he has given us 75% more shareholder value.
So Song finished the day today at double zero, let's call that six. And that surprises me. She wasn't falling when I was looking at her earlier. What a drop. That is almost 30% drop today. I'm going to be interested to see what this chart looks like. She dropped 28%. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She's got a verified transfer agent, but she doesn't have that verified profile. We would like to see that because those are validated information and pinks don't get validated information. So seeing those two green ticks just makes you feel better. It's not a deal breaker if they're not there, but you really don't want to get caught holding a stock that hasn't been validated. They tell us here that they are a shell risk. That's questionable. And I'll explain why here in a minute. And they've got independent directors listed here. Now, the only reason I know you list independent directors here on this site is when you have plans of uplisting. Now, I haven't read anything, but chances are it is in one of their filings. I don't know which one. Happy hunting. So, let's see what this company is about. Pro Music Rights is the fifth public performance rights organization to be formed in the United States. The fifth one. Now, I just read about an hour ago about a sixth one. Well, you know what that tells me? This is a very small sector. There's not a lot of competition here. Its licensees include notable companies such as TikTok, iHeartMedia, Triller, Napster, 7 Digital, Bevo, and many others. Pro Music Rights holds an estimated market share of 7.4% in the United States, representing over 2.5 million works that feature notable artists such as, and then they've got a whole bunch of names down here, and I don't think I recognize any of them. They also inform us here that recently they have gotten involved with artificial intelligence to create music to create films, scripts, videos. Now, I'm sure they're going to try to make money with these. As a licensing company, I can see them licensing them. But I actually read an article about a week ago that says any works of art, whether it be music, pictures, stories, that are created by, by AI cannot be copyrighted. Just so you know. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, how about that? We've got about a 100% increase, going from roughly 50 million shares up to 97 million shares. Share structure for song. Oh, well, there's a lot to say here, but let's just start where we're at. Authorized share count is incredibly high. It's up there at 20 billion. Outstanding shares. Everything on the market for us and the management, 2 billion. Management own about 38 million of those leaving us just under 2 billion shares. That is all for us. However, before we get to the news, I do want to tell you that this was originally 3.5 billion shares sitting here a month ago. So we have just lost 15, well, 1.5 billion shares in the last 30 days. But he ain't done yet. Market cap, we're at about 16.5 million. Financials for the company. Well, they just came on the market November of last year. So we've got a little bit of money showing up here at the end of 2022, about $41,000. And they didn't have to pay anything for that, right? Looking at the quarterly, are you ready for this? Are you buckled in? First quarter for this year, they did $758 million, jumping from 41000 now, I don't know if that was actually money paid to them or they had a couple lawsuits that they won, but that's a lot of money and it counts as revenues and they didn't pay for anything here. And in June, they did $93 million. So they're making real good money sitting on their butt suing people, basically. Balance sheet for the company, not much money in the bank. They've only got $2,000. We know it's thousands because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on these charts. Total assets for the company, about 45 million. Total liabilities is only 61,000. That leaves us shareholder equity of about 45 million. All right, let's jump on over into those disclosures before we get to the news. We got a lot of one use over here and they cover a lot of different things, but you might want to think of these as hatchet marks. The CEO is working hard and that's all of his work right there. 
Now, the other filing I want to bring to your attention is this attorney letter right here. Attorney letters are put out in conjunction with every annual report. Since they don't have CPAs going through their reports, which are called disclosures, they get an attorney. Now, the attorney doesn't go over the numbers. He looks over the information. And once that attorney letter is accepted, then the annual report is accepted. But what you see right there, attorney letter with respect to current information, is all you see. You don't get this huge extra information. I've been trading penny stocks for five years and I've never seen this before. And obviously they want me to see it because it's in all capital letters. It says, order for declaratory judgment ordered, adjudged, and declared that the court has determined based on the matters presented that the corporation is not now, nor has it been a shell company as defined under the Securities Act. And this is going to come into play when we look at the news because they are suing the OTC Links company. This one right here. They are suing the OTC markets. They tell us down here in the news. Let's just jump into this news. Music Licensing Inc. is pursuing a $386 million damage lawsuit against the OTC Link Markets Group. Music licensing is vigorously pursuing that $386 million in damages from the OTC link. The court hearing for this pursuit is scheduled for October 5th, 2023. Well, that's already passed, but I haven't seen any more news or filings about it. I don't know if it happened, if it was settled, or if it's continuated. I just don't know. They go on to tell us that Music Licensing Inc. is resolute in asserting that the OTC Link must be held accountable for its actions. OTC Market Group has attempted to shield itself by categorizing their own role as a publisher rather than acknowledging that OTC Link is a broker dealer. They publish a lot of information here, including these badges, right? Well, as a publisher, they have no liability, but as a broker dealer, they've got all liability. And they are saying they are one and the company saying that they are the other. That's going to be up to the courts to decide. But what's the problem? Well, here they say we also raise questions about the practice of the OTC Markets Group placing compliance flags on the OTC issuers, market profiles, including the caveat emptar, shell risk, delinquency, Promotion, which is a red megaphone. Anytime they promote their stock, this company warns you red is bad. They warn you there's a promotion going on. While OTC claims these flags are intended to protect investors, we see them as business offerings to other broker dealers through their Canary product line. Being who they are, their information is carried off to a lot of other places and they actually charge for letting these companies use their information. And this actually becomes a product up here. Well, the company feels that these badges have hurt their reputation. Investors like me come over here and say, oh, that's a yellow one. Yellow one means take concern. The green ones are good. Oh, that red one's bad. I think I'm gonna stay away from this. And they're concerned with that, so they are suing the company. The right of the broker dealer to make public statements about publicly traded issuers without factual basis and disseminate potentially false information without accountability is a matter of concern. Music Licensing Inc. is determined to pursue justice and fairness in the financial markets. And we just saw over there with that attorney letter, they're claiming they were never a shell company. So maybe it said shell company over here at one point and they're not happy with it. Jumping back over here to the news, we've got two news presses here about the CEO canceling a ton of shares. At the end of October, he took away a half a billion, and then at the beginning of November, he took away another billion. There's your 1.5 billion, bringing it down from 3.5 billion down to 2 billion. Now, in this news press, he says he's considering now taking another 1.2 billion shares away. That would give us 900 million, outstanding. That is outstanding. That's about 75% shareholder value. Then he makes some more promises up here that he's not gonna put any more new shares on the market, not until after 2024 if they need them. And then we've got a big piece of news here. This one came out on the 15th, right there. 
Music Licensing Inc. announces licensing enforcement, collection litigation campaign, and common stock buyback program. It's not good enough he's going to cancel a lot of shares. Now he's going to buy back even more. The company announced the commencement of a licensing enforcement and collection litigation campaign. Good for you guys. Coupled with the launch of a common stock buyback program. Under the newly proposed Common Stock Buyback Program, Music Licensing Inc. pledges to allocate 25% of all the net proceeds towards repurchasing common stock. I'm not quite sure where those proceeds are coming from. I was trying to figure it out. I couldn't see it. And they are going to use the rest of the money for the operations of the company. But they want you to make notice that they are prepared to pursue legal action against entities previously involved in litigation, such as Apple, Google, Amazon, and others, unless they enter into licensing agreements beforehand. So these companies have been infringing the licensing rights of certain music from this company, and this company says they're going to sue unless these companies become customers of this company. Like I said, there's a lot going on here and it's supposed to be a very simple business. But the bottom line is the CEO is hacking away at the share count. He's buying shares back. He's giving us shareholder value. And you know what? That is good for us, but it's also good for the market. Investors see this. This is drawing them in like bees to honey. We love it. And you can see it in the chart. We're now taking a look at SONG, ticker S-O-N-G, Music Licensing Incorporated, and we're going to be doing our charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. This is a four-hour, six-month view. We've got our low here of 0004. That was back in May. She hit a high of double that, nine and a half cents, at the end of June, and then came tumbling down to this hard floor down here where she's been sitting for a long time. Now look where the volume came in. There's our first wall right there. That was on the 19th of October, and it has been solid through here. Now, there hasn't been a whole lot of activity, right? The price isn't moving. She finally got to the 50, first bigger bar. She got on top of the 50. She's actually floating on her nine-day SMA here. She dipped. Why did she dip? I like to think of it as the crouch before the pounce. She came down just so she could go up down and up and she took off and she was down here at about double zero one two and she hit a high here of a penny you're looking at 800 percent run there folks in three days she's come back down to her nine day sma and she is meandering around that area right now and she's coming down a little bit she is getting close to that 200 day sma and when you back out folks i gotta tell you that doesn't look bad at all right there our 20-day SMA is turning up. Our 50-day has just started. Our 200 haul is definitely turning up. And we've got tons of volume lifting the price right now. Osculators, our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is high, but she's cooled off because of this last four hours in the day. We saw it was a 28% drop, for goodness sake. Our uh, MACD doing the same thing. She was really hot. She's cooling off. And our RSI is taking a tumble. It was clear up at 87 on the RSI and has come down to 62, which is still a pretty decent RSI reading. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So we had a hiccup here, just getting on top of that 50-day SMA. Blip, she got up there. She then pushed away here. And right when the 200-day SMA came into the picture, she took that crouch and jumped. Look, she is falling here. She doesn't want anything to do with it. She stretched, but didn't get near it. But once it got close and level, it broke out. That's the key element, folks. When the 200 goes flat, the price takes that as an opportunity to run. And she did. She took off here and got to that high, came back, bounced on her 20-day SMA, has gone up again, and now she's broken her 20. Looks like she's coming down to her 50, which I would say makes sense. She was riding the 50 here. She bounced off the 50 here. She pays heed to the 50. So I would anticipate this to actually come down to the 50 and bounce from there. Osculators, they're getting a bit cooler. Uh, everything is pushing down right now. Looking at our five-day, five-minute. Well, that's not a bad chart. 
We're at a low here of 0012, hit that high of a penny. Came down to the 200 day SMA and tested it with a rubber ball bounce. Went under the water with that rubber ball and came right back up because it can't stay under. And she started climbing again, fell back to the 50, bounced. This time when she's come back, she has not. Now this is where I think you need to look at the back times. And I wonder if our 15 minute shows us anything. No, so that's why I was showing you on the one hour, you can see she's in the air here. She's either got to come down to this 200 or this 50. She could come down on the 15 all the way to the 200, but that's a long ways. And looking at the five minute, there's nothing there. It's just down, 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 down. So we go back. So we're looking at about 0044 is where the 50 day SMA is right now. But you got to remember, it's going to be moving up as the price is coming down and they should meet somewhere in the middle. You can definitely see the volume is being stronger, big strong peaks in there. And our 200 day SMA is starting to curve over right now, but I wouldn't worry about it. This CEO is doing everything he says he's going to do. He is showing us that he is hacking these shares up. As Soon as he makes his first purchase on the buyback program, that's probably going to be another good bounce. I'm liking it. For a pink, it looks like a hot stock to be playing. It deserves to be on your watch list, folks. Ticker S-O-N-G, Music Licensing Group. Now you've probably noticed this is financial season. Everybody's putting out financials and some of them are really impressive, including this company's. This is WorkSport LTD, ticker WKSP. Now her chart isn't a breakout chart. It's not a surging chart. She's been in the downtrend for quite a while and she took a deep dive here recently. But since their financials came out, everything is turning around and it looks like it could be a strong recovery. So WorkSport finished today at $1.70 with about 20.5% gains. She is on the NASDAQ, so you're going to be able to trade this free, no transaction fees with major exchange stocks, even if they're penny stocks. And you can trade it pre-market, after-market. There's lots of benefits to trading major exchange penny stocks. So what is WorkSport LTD all about? Well, with this EV market, they decided to start creating innovative products that vehicles could use. And the first market they jumped onto was pickup trucks. Because the market lacked innovation, we saw an opening to become a new market leader, both with our conventional line of products and our breakthrough technology, a fusion of rugged utility and elegant scalable design. Our mission is to fuse renewable, sustainable green energy with innovative automotive accessories in a growing high demand market. We will forge parallel paths towards being a globally recognized designer and producer of our conventional line of products while being a disruptive innovator with our mobile solar technology. The Terra Viz will provide much needed clean in-bed power to the 50 million light trucks on our roads today as well as be a source of clean energy to recharge the forthcoming EV trucks. And those bed EV chargers, they can produce 650 watts of power. So what was the relative volume around WorkSport today? Well, that's a nice increase. They're not big numbers, but that's a nice jump going from 78,000 shares up to 540,000 shares. Share structure for the company. Well, they don't give us a lot of information here, but it doesn't look bad what we see. Outstanding share count is about 17 and a half million. I don't know what the float is, but it's not going to be any higher than that. And it could be a lot less. And even if it is 17 million, that's not a bad float at all. Market cap for WKSP, about 24 and a half million. Financials for the company. There we go. So back in 2019, they were doing roughly 2 million and then dropped during COVID and kept dropping. In 2022, they were down to $116,000 and they got to keep 59,000 of that. Looking at the quarterlies. All right, keep this one in mind. Looking back at September of last year, because that's what they're gonna compare it to year over year, they did $18,000 last year. 
at the end of June, they were already up to $200,000. They were starting to increase their revenues nicely, getting to keep $46,000. Now let's just jump into that news press about those financials. WorkSport reports 2,400% gains for Q3 revenue growth year over year. Revenue growth reflects WorkSport's growing production and large sales orders to be fulfilled. The company reports strong product backlog and pent up demand for Solus Solar Light truck cover and the core battery system. So, for Q3 2023, the company did $458,000. What did I tell you to remember from last year? $18 thousand dollars so they jumped from eighteen thousand to four hundred and fifty eight thousand in one year the company's commitment to execution innovation and expansion is its product portfolio which is expected to be the beginning of much bigger orders to come with the launch of the sc4 pro a new product line in june 2023 WorkSport has identified and penetrated new business-to-consumer and business-to-business -business sales channels. Following the company's initiating manufacturing at its 222,000 square foot New York manufacturing facility, which they just started in July of 2023, that's where all the money's coming from, WorkSport received $720,000 in purchase orders for its soft folding cover and a staggering $1.6 million for their hard folding cover. In another strong revenue generating development, during Q3 2023, the company signed a long-term supply agreement that starts with projected annual revenues of $16 million for its cutting edge and advanced hard folding and soft folding truck bed covers with just one of its major US based aftermarket consumers. So they've got a deal they've just put in place which is gonna add another 16 million to their revenues. This could possibly exceed that estimate by a significant margin. They're just giving us a number but they think it could be a lot bigger than 16 million. The establishment of the state-of-the-art R&D facility in Springfield, Missouri and the completion of custom manufacturing line highlight WorkSport's dedication to quality and innovation during Q3 of 2023. So they're busy now, folks. They've got a new facility they just opened up, one they just started producing in, which is bringing in a lot of revenues and the back orders are building up. Taking a look at those disclosures, we have two recent ones here, the 10Q, which is their most recent financial, and the 8K to back up that financial with more information. And if you're really interested in the company, don't waste your time running around Google. They'll have you going everywhere getting this piece and that piece. You'll get every piece in a 10K or a 10Q from the day they were incorporated. Jumping on over to that news now. Now, we're not going to dive into any of this. We're just going to headline it because the company's doing a lot of business. They're bringing out new products. They're making new contracts. I've gone back here to October 24th. The company increases research and development for their Terravis Energy Subsidiary Heat Pump Project. We haven't heard anything about that yet. Brand new project. Another piece of news here that was in October, the company presents a uniquely configured bed cover model for Canadian automotive store chain following a recent $16 million annual sales agreement with the U.S. brand. We just read about that $16 million deal in the U.S. and now they're making a deal over in Canada. They got $4.7 million invested into them by big investors. They call those direct offerings and private placements. Here in November, WorkSport gears up for initial alpha release of its pioneering core portable energy storage system. You saw a picture of that. They are just now releasing it. And then the most current news, WorkSport reports 2,400% growth year over year. That's the exciting part. Let's go take a look at the chart because it's kind of exciting too. Let's take a look at ticker WKSP. This is WorkSport. We've got a six month, four hour view here. Our high, that was back in July of $4.33 and our low was just a couple days ago of $1.29. 
Now you can see I've drawn a support resistance line here. You can see that is right where we are at right now. And it was off of this support she got her biggest growth, jumping all the way up there to that 433 and then breaking down, trying to hang on without any success until she hit this low bubble. And she is bouncing off of the low bubble at a very good time. We've got hot news. We've got year over year growth of 2,400%. They are coming out with new products. They just got a new factory online. Everything is hot. I'm expecting this to run. She has come out from underneath that nine day SMA from that low bubble, pushed herself up over the 50, hit this strong resistance of $1.74 and has pulled back and is at $1.70 right now, still above the 50. Our oscillators, they're showing some strength. Our PPO is at a crossover and pushing up. Our MACD has just crossed the signal line and we've got lots of green bars accumulating there. Our RSI has pulled back just a little bit, but it is up there at 63 right now. And our 50 day SMA is starting to turn up right now. Good timing. Looking at our 20 day one hour view. So she was coming down hard here. She's been bouncing off of this bottom area right through this area here, hitting and hitting again, came below it. And once she came below it, that was the signal to start pushing up. And then of course the news helped to get her up over this 200 day SMA on our one hour chart. And you can see she's flat now, right? That is seriously downhill. And right here, she is totally flat. This is a perfect time for a breakout. She's gotten up to that strong resistance, pulled back. She is above her nine day SMA and it's hard to see, but there's one more line right smack dab in the middle of this bar. That's where I like to see the bottoms of all of these, no lower than the center. That tells me she's still climbing up step by step. So this doesn't look bad. Here comes our 20 day SMA pushing up over that 200 and our 200 hole and 50 day SMA are going to do the same thing. Those are called golden crosses. When these smaller SMAs get into the right position up over top of the 200, it's exciting to the investors and you see the trading pick up. Our oscillators are all pushing up gently, but they are all growing except for our RSI. Again, it has come down just a little bit and she's now at 64. Five day, five minute. So there's the end of our downtrend, hitting that $1.29 and bouncing off of it very quickly, coming just underneath the 200, back down, but not any lower than that strong support resistance, came up to that 200, she battled with it the rest of the day, and then shot up pre-market today, going from $1.38 all the way up to $1.75. She fell a little at the bell, opening up at a buck 56, went back up to a new high of $1.76, breaking that strong resistance, making it a support. She came back under it. You can't expect the first break to be enough, maybe not even two, but here comes our third one. Bigger bar, much bigger bar, pushing up strong right now. Our 200 day SMA is pushing up. We've got a crossover on our PPO. We have a crossover on our signal line on our MACD. <laughs> And again, our RSI has fallen a little bit and it's down there now at 53. But I'm liking WorkSport. She's got one facility just got into operation and it is making them all this money right now. They've got a second facility that just came online. They've got this heat pump. That was the first time I heard about that. They got their core, the energy storage unit. They got those covers and they've got more products coming out. It looks hot, folks. And let me tell you what, 50 million pickups in America, that's enough to make any company filthy rich. WKSP, I'm going to put it on my watch list. I think she's got some bouncing to do. Last company we're taking a look at also comes from the major exchanges, the NASDAQ. This is LM Funding America, ticker LMFA. Now her chart is not exciting. It's in a downtrend. It's been falling for a while. The only good thing I can say is she's had a lot of these directional intentional spikes. You know, those big green bars that are deep underneath the 200 that go right through it and then put a long wick over the 200. Well, the 200 is sloped down 
Every time you get one of those green bars breaking through with a long wick, there's a string on that wick attached to the 200, and each one of them tug the 200 up until it becomes level. That becomes an opportunity for a breakout. And I think this company has a chance to break out. Companies like her, because she's a Bitcoin mining company. Right now, Bitcoin is getting active again. She's gotten very volatile in the last week. Last week, she had a big fall. This week, she's climbing again. And I think that's why we need to be taking a look at these Bitcoin mining companies. And this one especially. She just had financials and they were impressive. So LM funding finished today just over 38 cents and she did fall 2.3% today. So what was her relative volume? Well, that's nice. It jumped over five times, a 500% increase on volume, going from 400,000 shares to just over 2.1 million. Share structure for the company is decent. Not that I have all the facts here, but the outstanding share count is a mere 14.6 million. I don't know what the float is, but it's never higher than the outstanding share count, and that's pretty decent. Could be a lot less, too. Market cap, that's pretty low. We're at 5.7 million, but it's understandable why it's a low market cap. Market cap is figured out by taking the price and multiplying it times the shares. If they had a billion shares, this would be a lot higher. Me, I prefer a lower share count and a low market cap than vice versa. That's just my personal feelings. Financials for LMFA. So back in 2019, she was doing $2.2 million. COVID came along, took about half of that, then she dropped some more down to 900,000. And now she's coming back at the end of 2022, she has $1.7 million. Doesn't cost her anything to do this? Come on, the electricity can't be free. And they're not putting the profit margins here. Quarterly, all right, a year ago, year over year, right? They did $187,000 worth of business. June, the second quarter of 2023, they did 3.1 million. Now, before we jump into the news press giving us the financials, let's take a look at that balance sheet real quick. Cash in the bank, they got $1.8 million. Assets, 42 million. Total liabilities, ooh, look at that, only 1.1 million leaving us total stockholder equity positive 41 million. So that's looking good. Now let's go back to our numbers over here for our revenues and look at this PR. LM Funding America achieves over 1,720% year over year revenue growth to 3.4 million. The company has mined 117 Bitcoins in the third quarter with an average price of 28,000 per Bitcoin. Now, think about this. Bitcoin is up roughly $10,000 now. It's closer to 38,000 than it is to 28,000. So if you were to take those 117 Bitcoins, multiply it times that extra 10,000, that would give you roughly 1.1 million more dollars. Throw that up here, 1.1 would give us 4.5 million. Now you are up to 2,300% gains, just on the same coins. Now that's the great thing about Bitcoin mining. They may do less work next quarter not do as many coins. But if Bitcoin keeps going up, that pile they have, the pile they've already mined that they're holding just gets fatter and fatter, like a pregnant woman. The company reports working capital of approximately 4.5 million with stockholders equity of 35.9 million, which equals out to $2.45 per share. Right now, folks, we are at under 40 cents. Now, I just showed you how they figure out market cap. You take the price and you multiply it times the outstanding share count. Well, to figure out what a share price should be, you come over here to that balance sheet down to shareholder equity. You take that number right there and you divide that by the outstanding share count. And that tells you what each share is worth. I've done the math. He's right. These should be closer to $2.40 and we're down here at 40 cents. 
That means that there is 500% undervaluation on this stock right now. And that's really all we've got to say. There's nothing else going on. They don't make deals. They don't have customer satisfaction feedback. They don't have advertisement. All they do is mine Bitcoin. And the more they get, the more it's going to be worth. Imagine if Bitcoin does hit $100,000. What are companies like this going to be worth? Wow. Let's go check out this chart. Eee, it's an ugly chart, but let's look at it anyways. This is ticker LMFA, LM Funding America. It's a six month, four hour view. Six months ago in March, we had a high of $1.38 and we had a low of 31 cents at the end of October. Now she has been in a downtrend all this time with some nice pops going through that 200. This one right here jumped from 73 cents up to $1.37, almost 100%. This one down here went from 42 cents up to 77. That's about 75%. But what I'm interested in are those big bars that are pushing through the 200 with that long wick, right? That's not the bar, it's just the wick. And there is a string attached to the end of this to each one of these SMAs. The higher that price gets, the more it tugs on these. And each time she does that, she is tugging on it until it's gonna be finally level. And she's already close underneath it. Once it goes level, she's gonna break out. And I think with Bitcoin rising, this is gonna be one of the companies that gets attention because they've just had strong revenues. So this directional intentional spike, that is close to the 200. I am gonna be watching this now. Our volume has gotten strong the last couple of days and it was strong back here. And we've had some volume in here, which is a lot more than we've had back here. Oscillators are very cool. My PPO is coming down. My ADX trend continuation is going up. I put my PPO above my ADX so I can look for patterns. When I see the two of them coming together, I know my price is falling. When they're going apart from each other, I know my price is rising. So that's telling me the price is falling. I'm thinking she's going to come down to this 200 haul, which penny stocks have been respecting here recently. And she's already bounced off of it a few times. I'm expecting her to bounce off of it again and maybe put up another spike, maybe break out. But I think she's working towards the breakout. Our MACD is also falling down. She has crossed over the signal line downwards. And our RSI is pretty cool right now. It's down at 46. Checking out our 20 day one hour view. So she is over the 200 here at 77 cents and then she's under it at 31 cents. She popped right back through it again and fell back and it looks like she's riding on her 20 day SMA for the most part. She came underneath and we've got another pop here and this one is actually more on top of the 200 than underneath it. But she's not climbing anywhere. She's showing this excitement, but she's not actually using it to go anywhere. She's coming back down right now, and our oscillators say she is still falling. I hope she doesn't go too far. I wouldn't expect her to go any further than about right there, I would think, which is 35 cents. That would be a good buy-in on this presuming that Bitcoin keeps climbing. That is the catalyst with this company. Coming down to the five day, five minute. Well, there's really not a lot to look at, right? She's hanging around the 200. She's not low. She's not fighting to get away from the 200. She's just hanging around here. And every now and then you get this huge pop just jumping up there. That's better than a huge drop, right? I would much rather have a pop than a drop. And we're getting these regularly and she is still hanging around her 200. I don't see anything happening at this very moment, but I'm watching Bitcoin. Bitcoin took a big jump today and she could keep climbing and everything this company has is gonna be worth more. Every day as Bitcoin climbs, this company becomes worth more even if they don't mine any more coins, but you know they're going to. And the one detail I do not wanna overlook is that the company's stock is worth $2.40. They've got the Bitcoin. The Bitcoin has value. Those are assets. They have 14 million shares. Divide those shares into those assets. That's what it's worth. And what are we down to here? 38 cents. And even when we were looking at our four hour chart, 
The high is only $1.38, and this is supposed to be up here at $2.40, way the heck up there. So we've got a lot of growth potential here, folks. If Bitcoin keeps growing, people will start focusing in on these companies and they are going to see the real value. So LMFA is a good company to watch. There's a lot of Bitcoin mining companies out there. If you've got a favorite, you may want to put it on your watch list right now. It deserves some more due diligence, as do the other stocks. I don't have time to share everything with you. And truth be told, I might make a mistake. It happens more often than you believe. So please, folks, do your own due diligence. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.